Hi, Paul from Contemporary Synth here. In these tutorials, we explore the technical and artistic capabilities of the Roland Phantom O workstation. Today, I'm going to talk about ways you can connect your MIDI keyboard to your PC or desktop, not as an instrument, but as a controller, like a keyboard like this, or a joystick, or some other kind of physical device that you can use to control applications, not just DAWs or music software. And I'll give you some examples of how you might use that. My personal goal is to flip PowerPoint slides automatically while I'm playing a song. But I've read about other folks who use the control pedals to change pages in a PDF document, like to keep up with sheet music. But then I'm gonna show you other software that can control lighting tools. So if you have lights or fogs or a visual effects, if you have DJ software that you can run on your computer, you can use the pads for sound effects. You can use the wheel for fading or scratching, all kinds of whatever your software has shortcut keys to allow can be sent through this keyboard. One guy I read about uses an old MIDI controller to control Microsoft Flight Simulator. So anything with shortcut keys, you can control with your keyboard. And I'm gonna show you a couple ways to do that. First way I'm gonna show you is some a commercial tool. And there are a bunch of tools that I'll show you here, but this one is the possibly the most capable, certainly the most expensive. This is Max for Ableton Live. And this is $200 and it runs on Windows and Mac. Any kind of physical or virtual device that you can connect to your computer can be controlled through the software and synchronized with your music while you're playing it. There are a lot of videos and a lot of explanations on here. Check it out if that sounds like what you want. For me, it's way more functionality and way more money than I had in mind. The next step down on the spectrum is central control. Now this one is 80 US dollars and it has a great page that shows you some of what it does. So you'll see any MIDI controller to any live device, timelines and macros so you can synchronize what goes out when, teleprompters, and a host of other capabilities that involve sequencing and multi-keys and multi-devices. Seems like a pretty cool app. Again, not what exactly what I was looking for. Moving down here onto the lower end of the cost spectrum, this is MIDI Translator Pro from the German company Bohm. And you can see it's not quite as sophisticated an interface, but it does what I'm looking for. Keystrokes in, keystrokes out, MIDI in, serial in, think of any USB device like a joystick or a controller, and timers and others, think about like Arduinos or any other kind of device you have that sends a signal. MIDI Translator Pro can take that signal and then convert it to something similar coming out the other end. Specifically keyboard, the mouse is interesting, you can go up and click on something and all the other stuff that the inputs allow. Here are some examples of where it says it can be used. Bohm works for Windows and Mac, and this is 60 euros, so around 65 US dollars. It has a trial version, but it's pretty annoying. It only runs for 20 minutes, and you have to watch an annoying splash screen. This is Coyote MIDI. This is the last tool I'll show you. Now this one has a trial version that's free, and it works, and it perfectly meets my needs, so I'll show you how that works. There is a pro version for $30 that gives you a little more functionality, but this is Windows only, unfortunately. Let me show you what this looks like. Come into the settings menu, and the first thing you'll see is that it shows the same three input devices that we typically see in Ableton or any of the MIDI tools, so that's comforting. And if I go to show events, it's now listening, and I can press a key, and here it is. It's a note on event. The note is number 28, so that's just the MIDI number of this E1 note. The velocity was 96, and it shows that it came through that phantom channel. And when I let it up, I get a note off event. It does not show the velocity, but it still shows that it's key 28. So if I press this guy up here, this is key number 40, note on, note off. Now those are notes, all the notes work, but so does the pitch bend, and so does the control change, and so does the wheel, and so does my pedal down here, and so do, I put this in note mode, so do these guys. So they all have, you know, those are notes or control change, and you can capture all of that and create what they call translations. Let's create a translation. So if I go to translation, add one, record whatever you want. I'm gonna record my E1 down here. And what do you want to do? Now all I want to do is flip PowerPoint slides. So I'm gonna go page up. I'll add another one, record E2, and go page down. And now if I bring up my slides, I can go page up, page down. And it works. Oh, if I go, don't go past one, you get a little beep. So that solves all my problems. There is a little more functionality here. Also, you can select a velocity range if you want to limit that. You can silence the MIDI so that it actually doesn't come out as a sound. 
you can control which devices that it listens to, the channel, filter it down to one channel, and you can send multiple keys at a time. You can also send a mouse action and other types of actions, not just keystrokes. So this is great for the low cost of free. It seems to be doing translations. What it does not do is A, it doesn't work on Mac. B, I can't save this. When you close Coyote, it comes back up and they're all still here. You're supposed to put them in folders, but the folder only comes with the pro version. And the other challenge is I have to have my application in the foreground. And if I don't do that, it won't run. Uh, that's gonna be a challenge if you're using Ableton, but that is a common limitation. So maybe this isn't a bad alternative. Last one I'm gonna show you is a way to do this yourself, writing your own code. And there's some advantages to this because if you can embrace learning the code, you can add whatever functionality you want and you're not limited to the restrictions of the app. And I'll give you an example. I learned how to do this just for this video, but then I was able to apply the same techniques and get my old Xbox drums to work. So it is pretty powerful. There's lots of functionality and simple human understandable commands build up into pretty capable tools really quickly. Fast means we're not gonna have a latency problem. Python plays well with others, so we're gonna see that it works on MIDI, it works with lots of different operating systems, it works with Mac, Windows, Linux, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, whatever you wanna do, it does run everywhere, and that's a great function for Python and not every language. It's like that. We'll let you see if it's friendly and easy to learn. And open means that the whole world is contributing library functions and support and documentation. So any question you put out there, somebody has an answer for. So let's show you how this is gonna work. First thing you have to do is download it. So you download whatever's right for your platform. We'll be using version three, that's the latest one that's out there. And then you open up some kind of command terminal, which I have here, and then you create a file. And mine is called test.py. Go to a folder that you're gonna want that uh, you're comfortable with. I'm gonna be in the public folder just for this demo. Normally I'd be in my document somewhere. And the first Python command we're gonna use is print. And that just puts some letters on the screen. Uh, to be a real coder, you gotta try that. File, save, notice the shortcut is control S. I'll use that from now on. Python test.py. Look at that. That's not what I meant to do, control S. Up arrow runs your previous command. Bam, there you go. To perform MIDI functions, I need to download some library commands that are not in the normal Python download. So the first one I'm gonna use is called MIDO, and that stands for MIDI object. Now this loads it from my computer into memory. In order to put it on my computer, I have to install it, and you use the Python program called PIP to do that. And this downloads when you download Python. PIP stands for PIP installs Python. So don't think about that two minutes or you'll, uh, you'll hurt your head. So I run pip install middle. On Apple and Linux, you have to type pip3 because Python 2 also exists. So you guys will be typing pip3 install middle. So of course I'm getting the error that it's already in here, but that's okay. Here it'll be the first time for you. Now when that's there, instead of printing hello world, I can print middle and one of their functions is get input names. Control S, up arrow, I don't want to install, don't want to install, there. And when it prints that, I can see the same three phantom instances that were there before. So that is a nice check. Also not what I want to do, but it's a good reassurance that those are there. Here's a little magic, I'm looking at some uh, sample program over here on this other monitor, which I will put in the description so you can copy and paste from the same thing that I am. This is going to run the open input command, which just listens to all three of those channels and takes any signal that comes out, puts it in this variable called message, and then prints it out. And the four word, this colon in this space, all make this program loop forever until I exit it. Control S, run it, and here it is looping. So let's press that same E1 key. And look, note on, channel zero, note is 28, velocity 110, who cares about the time right now, and let it go, note off. Two differences. One is that the keyboard and most every other app in the world counts the MIDI channels from one to 16. 
mid O counts it from zero to 15. So what we see as channel one, it sees at channel zero. We'll just have to remember that. The other thing that's interesting is it gives you a velocity on the release. On the note off, I don't know what to do with that, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. Once I have that data into this variable message, now I can start doing cool stuff with it. Like, I don't need to see all of them. Let's only see if the type is note on and it comes into mid O channel two, which is gonna be my channel three. Let's try that. Control scroll lock exits. Now I get nothing until I go to channel three and there it is. And I'm only printing the note on and I can get fancier instead of saying print every single note. What if I only want to print some notes? So now I only print it if the note is 28. What I'm going to do ultimately is, well, I'm going to do now is I don't want, just want to print that on the screen. I want to do something. I want to do right now. I want to do a page up when that note is there. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to need another library. If you are Windows only, you can experiment with the keyboard module. That's not bad. You can do a search on that and learn more about it. I'm going to use Pi Auto GUI. Now, Pi Auto GUI is a more capable library and it works on Windows and Mac. You do have to install it. So you go pip3 install pi auto GUI. And like before, this one's, uh, this one's a little more uh, comprehensive. If you decide that you don't want it, you can do pip3 uninstall. And you can do that later and get your disk space back if that's something you want to do. With pi auto GUI installed, I can add this magic command. Pi auto GUI lets you press keys. It also lets you draw boxes on the screen, accept input from users. It lets you move the mouse and click on it. It lets you do all kinds of stuff. I'm only gonna use it to do this key press right now. And since we did that one, let's do the other one too. That's page up. Page down is gonna be note equals 40. Control save, run it. And now, if I bring up my slides, it works. So I have essentially recreated what I did in Coyote, where it pages up, pages down. The app has to be in the foreground. However, this one does work on Mac and the other one did not. What's nice is that I can add a whole bunch of other keys in here and get all the functionality that I want, which you could do in Coyote also. So what I'm gonna do that a little bit later, but I want one of these to be my verse one, verse two, verse three, refrain. I'm gonna do a blank slide over here. So during my song, I can put that in the pattern and it'll go to the right spot. All right, I'm gonna show you one other library. Before I do that, let me show you how I'm quitting here. I do control scroll lock and that exits the program. I have a Dell laptop and I'm using a USB keyboard here. If you want to exit the program and you don't have a scroll lock key on your computer, you can do Windows OSK for on-screen keyboard and Control scroll lock will exit the program. Let's demo that here. So it's running and I'll go control scroll lock and it exits. So that's something you can do if you need to. All right, the last library I wanna show you is, this is Windows only, unfortunately. I don't know how to do this on Apple. This is a win32.com client. You gotta pip install it. What this lets you do, and this is absolute magic, but it lets you create this new variable. I'm gonna call it PPT, short for PowerPoint. And it lets you use this dispatch function to find an active slideshow and save a pointer to the slideshow in your PPT variable. And what that lets you do is, and I'll just show you this one, instead of pressing a key, it lets you just call the previous slide. And that's gonna be super handy. Let me just put them all in here so you can see, and then I'll change it out later. So these are all the different things I want to do. Previous, first slide, go to slide seven, go to slide 17. But I'll just do the page up, page down for now. And now if I don't have the focus, it still works. And that's using the PPT pointer from the Win32.com. So that's really handy. And there's a list in my notes that shows you all the other things you can do with that. Pretty powerful. So I'm going to have a little bigger 
code list here. I'm going to put all those print statements back in. So now, if it's 28, it's going to print out notes 28, key is E1, and action previous. And what that's going to do is to tell us what I'm doing while my program's running later. Previous, next, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, refrain, next, previous, and then F exits. That is my app, and that is what I'm going to use in the next video when I build a song and put those keystrokes into the pattern in its own channel to cycle through the words as I sing it. Okay, so we've talked about commercial apps, we've talked about trial tools, we've talked about high end, we've talked about low end. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to connect your keyboard to your computer and control some apps and do something fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.